Okay, in this problem here, we're going to work again on finding the probability of type 2 errors. So the company claims the average age of their new staff is 26. So that means that mu equals 26. Members of the board of directors believe the average age of the new staff is higher than 26. Well, this must be my null hypothesis. And so my alternative hypothesis is going to be bigger than 26. Now, we also know that the Human Resources Department wants to investigate the issue and collects data using a sample randomly chosen where n is 25, x bar is 28, and x bar is 28, and s is equal to 6. So the standard deviation of the sample is 6. So this is an estimate of the unbiased estimate of the population. Because I don't know the true standard deviation, I'm going to be using the t-test, a t-statistic for this problem. Now, I want to find the appropriate critical regions using raw data corresponding to the significance level 0 0.1 and 0 0.01. Well, I know that this is going to be 26. And somewhere over here is going to define where this value here is 0 0.1. And so I need to find this value here that corresponds to it. So Z or T star. Well, my degrees of freedom is going to be 24. So finding T star, well, if I go to my calculator, if I go second, oh, go statistics. No, sorry, go second distributions. I'm going to do number four, inverse T. I want this area over here to be 90%. And so I get my T star as 1.317. So this T star is going to correspond to some like X bar star that defines my critical value, my critical region. And to find this X bar, I'm going to go x bar minus my mu of 26 divided by 6 over the square root of 25. Do this calculation, this x bar star will end up being 27.58. And so this value here is 27.58. And let me put it in here so we can see it on my graph, 27.58. So that's defining the critical region. Now, this is, I do this if my alpha equals 0 0.1. However, if my alpha equals, if alpha equals 0 0.01, I move my alpha value down to here. So now this area down here is 0 0.01. And again, I'm going to have to find the T star for that, the T star here. If I go to my calculator, if I go second distributions, I want my inverse T. I'm going to do an area of 0.99. Still degrees of freedom 24. And when I do this, my T star is 2.492159. Well, that is going to equal again, to find this like X bar star, it's going to equal X bar minus 30, sorry, minus 26, which is mu over 6 over square root of 25, which is 5. Calculating the x bar star, I end up doing that, and I get 28.99. And so this here is 28.99. Now, state the conclusion each case and whether I, what type of error may have happened. Well, my true, my sample statistic x bar 
actually happens right here. This is 28. So if I'm doing the blue one, or this is my alpha value, then it is in the critical region, so I reject H0 and claim that the average age is over 26. If this occurred, it's inside my region here, so it's possible that a type 1 error may have occurred. Maybe not, we don't know. If, however, my alpha value is 0 0.01, 0 1, here's my critical region, my 28 is outside of that region. So therefore, this time, I would fail to reject H0. So I'm thinking that it is not true. And so if that's the case, I may have meant to have thrown out the null hypothesis, but I didn't, and so that is where a type 2 error falls. And for me, the easy way to remember which is which is I actually only remember which one is type 1. Type 1 falls inside the critical region, and it is alpha. The other situation is type 2. But this is the one that I remember most clearly, and I work out the other one from type 1. Okay, so now looking back at my question now, I've done uh, a part. Given that the true population mean is 30, calculate the probability of making a type 2 error when the significance level is both these two. Well, to make a type 2 error, I do not even need to consider this. This is worthless information. I do this calculation before I do my statistics. So I come along and... If I think about my graphs, for this one, what's happening is this, I think it's 26. But my sample statistic here, my t, my, uh, the defining of my critical region for 0 point, or for an alpha value of 0 0.1, here is my critical region defined, where this is 27.1. 5, 8. Here's the critical region. Now, this is if 26 is correct, but for some reason we know that it's not correct. And there's another value, there's a true, this is the true normal curve, where this is 30 degrees, or 30 years of age. And so, even though I was conceiving this was where I was doing my statistics. This is the true sample distribution. And so making a type 2 error is going to just be this possibility here. Because type 2 error happens when I'm not with inside this region, but on this side. So this is my type 2. So I need to find the area that it is less than 27.58 when 30 is my mean. And so doing that calculation, the probability of a type 2, well, I'm going to go to my calculator. I means the probability that my x bar is less than 27.58 given that mu equals 30. So this is the problem we want to find, but in order to do it, we need to find this corresponding t value for this particular region. So t, I know, is going to be the 27.58 minus 30 over the 6 is my standard deviation over the square root of 25, which is 5. If I do this calculation, I know that it is negative 2.01549. So that's what this t value is for this normal curve with a mean of 30. And so now this probability is equal to the probability that t is less than negative 2.01549. So to find that probability, I'm going to go second distributions. I'm going to go TCDF, number 6, going from big negative number to negative 
five, four, nine. Oh, I missed a one somewhere there. I'm gonna insert the one. Degrees of freedom is 24. And when I do that, I end up with the probability of 0 0.02763 to three significant figures. Okay, so you have to change the 27 to a T value from the 30 degree T distribution. All right, I want you on your own to independently do the type 2 for when alpha is 0 0.01. Do the second part. When you're done, you should get a probability. You can check your answer. The probability of that is going to be 0 0.204. Okay, see part now. How does it change in probability of a type 1 error related to the change in the probability of a type 2 error? Well, if I try and make a picture of this, if I take this, here I know is, let's say here is my boundary for a type 1 error. Here is the type 1. And if I take it doing this, in essence, makes my type 1 error smaller. Okay, here is my second potential curve. And I know that the area here, this is type 2. If I come along and I move my type 1, Type 1 is getting smaller, but the type 2 here is increasing. So how are they related? Well, if you take type 1, if you take type 1 and decrease it, then type 2 increases and vice versa. However, so the only way to combat that situation is you want to take these normal curves and you want to make them skinnier. And so when you make them skinnier, you know, decrease the area in that sense, the only way to do that is to increase your sample size of n. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of information about type 1 and type 2 error.